Another new feature in Ravel 3 that's going to make it very easy to be able to paint where you want to paint is going to be the magic wand. So if I come over here and I click on the magic wand tool, what you'll see is that it's part of the selection tools. And you can see that I can click on any of the selection tools, the icon here will change. But for right now, I had the magic wand selected, so that's the one that's going to be seen up here in the toolbox. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk a bit about that by using a document that I created in another program. The reason why is because I needed some gradients to be able to really bring home to you exactly what the magic wand is meant to do. I also don't want the texture of the canvas to be distracting to you when we're thinking about what this is doing. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna set the texture visibility of the canvas all the way to zero so that we can see that these are nice, smooth gradients with no texture whatsoever in them. Now, I currently have the tolerance set to zero, and if you don't, then make sure that you do as well. And the reason why is because this is going to directly impact the type of results that we get. Now, the first thing that you should understand about the magic wand tool is that this is basically running a search. It's running a search for any pixels in the document that are gonna be the same as the pixel that we click on. So if I were to come over here and click on a black pixel, meaning somewhere in this black circle, you're gonna see that all three of these black circles are selected, as well as a sliver of black here, and this black end of this gradient. But no other colors are selected. The reason why is because we have a tolerance of zero, meaning that we're only going to accept the exact same pixels that we clicked on, meaning that if I click on black, I'm only gonna get black and it's gonna be the black that's everywhere in the document. If I use the command Control D to deselect, and if you don't know where that is, if you come over here to edit, you see it's deselect all, Control D. And what I wanna do now is I wanna come over here and turn on contiguous. And the reason why is because the contiguous is going to force the results of the search to come back to only touching colors. So if I come over here and I click now on that same black, you'll see that I only get that black. And the reason why is because none of these other black areas are touching. Now, if I wanted to add other black areas, like say this little sliver over here, I can hold down the shift key on my keyboard. You'll see that my cursor changes to indicate a plus sign. So if I click now, you'll see that I'm able to add that. If I wanted to get rid of that, all I need to do is go ahead and hold down the Alt key. You'll see my cursor changes again. And now I click on that, it'll remove that, but it'll keep this area selected. So you can add or remove to these magic wand selections by simply holding down Shift to add or holding down Alt to remove on areas that you click. Now that said, I'm gonna come over here, turn off the contiguous and use the Control D keyboard shortcut again to go ahead and get rid of the selection. Now, the next one that I wanna talk about here is going to be tolerance because we've already seen how a tolerance of zero will only give us results that match exactly. But what about areas like this where maybe we have a range of values that we wanna click on, but we wanna get more than one color? Well, what we can do is we can come over here and we can set the tolerance to something else. A typical value that you might find on a magic wand would be a value of 32. What this is going to be saying is that we can click on a value, any value that we want to, and it will return up to 32 variations. So in a typical grayscale image, you're having 256 shades of gray, meaning that if I click on black, for instance, what you're going to be seeing is that I'm going to get 32 shades that are close to black, meaning that I'm getting more than pure black, I'm getting these other 32 shades. And you can see that I've also got the black here, and I've also got some 32 shades of black here. The larger the tolerance, the more related colors we're going to be getting. So if I come over here and I click on blue, for instance, you'll see that I'm not just gonna get the blue, but I'm also gonna get some of the shades as it's transitioning into green. Now I can also click on the green and you'll see what I get here is not just that particular sliver of green, but the related parts of that. And once it gets past the 32 shades of variation, it basically ignores everything. Now, if I wanted to set the tolerance back to zero and I wanted to keep it very tight, meaning that I only wanted to get the colors that I click on, but I wanted to get more than one color, then what I can do is I can come over here and I can click and then I can hold down shift and I can click and I can click. And you can see I can manually add those values in. And so it's really quite easy to get exactly what you want. You don't necessarily have to change the tolerance value. To do that, you can simply hold down the shift key and add until you get exactly the selection that you want. Now that said, there is one other feature here I wanna talk about. So I'm gonna do a control D to deselect. And what I wanna do is come over here to the pastel tool and I'm gonna create a new layer so that we have a layer above this. And I'm just gonna turn the visibility off on layer one for right now so that we're focused on what we're gonna be doing with this pastel. I'm using the Hexasoft and I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a bit larger so that we can really see this. And I'm gonna go ahead and make two strokes and maybe I'll make them in something like a red color so they're really visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub and I wanna make sure that I'm getting some transparency here. So I'm gonna scrub two strokes just like that. 
So the idea here is that both of these have some transparency. We can see the transparency by the fact that when we turn off the canvas, we can see the transparent grid in the background there. So what I wanna do now is talk about this final option that we have over here, which is going to be use alpha. So in order to be able to do this, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the contiguous because I only wanna make selections that are going to be pixels that are touching. But then I'm gonna go ahead and leave the use alpha off. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this first part here. And this is going to select everything that you can see here. And you're gonna see that it selects all the way out to the outer edges of that brush stroke. The reason why is because we have the use alpha off. Now if I go ahead and turn the use alpha on, and I come over here and I hold down shift and I click on this second stroke, what you're gonna see is the selection is very different. Instead of going all the way to the outside edge, like when we had use alpha off, it's only gonna get the centermost part. And instead what it's gonna be doing is it's gonna be ignoring these outer edges of the selection. Now that's not actually what's really happening. What's really happening is those outer edges are only partially selected because of the fact that we're using the alpha to sort of mask the results that we're getting from the magic wand. We'll understand that in just one second by coming over here and creating a new layer. I'm gonna turn off the visibility for layer two so that we're only seeing layer three. You can see the selections. And now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna choose from the airbrush category, the soft one. I'm gonna get a size that's a bit larger. And I'm gonna choose something like a blue color so that we're able to see this. And maybe I'll just make that a little bit smaller because right now it's probably a bit too big. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and stroke right over the top of that and so that we can just see what these guys are gonna give us. Now I'm gonna do a Control D to deselect. And you're going to see that the one where we did not have the Use Alpha checked gives us a very hard edge selection. And the reason why is because it's returning everything that's red, that's touching, as a fully on selection. But when we choose to use alpha, it's respecting the alpha transparency that existed in that layer when we clicked on those red pixels. So this gives us a selection that's much closer to what we might expect when we were making those marks in the first place in order to create our selection. So there's times when you wanna use alpha, there's times when you don't wanna use alpha, but I wanted you to see very clearly what the differences were when you chose to use the alpha versus when you chose to ignore the alpha. So that said, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this layer because we don't need that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer because we don't need that. And actually, now I'm just gonna go ahead and close this whole document and we'll start with a new document in the next video.